Coming up on this week's episode, copycat threats have been reported, causing law enforcement to step up safety precautions at East. Smoke rising from the school results in fire alarms and confusion, while Grant and Drew give us an overview of the 2021 sports year. All of this and more coming up on Trojan TV. Good afternoon, Trojans. I'm Adelaide. And I'm Tayla. And Trojan TV starts, starts now. now. This episode of Trojan TV is sponsored by Posey Construction LLC, Building the Future, Restoring the Past, and Tandem Wealth Management, Moving Forward Together. It's nice to be back in person after the recent online days. Yes, it is. Even if you don't care for masks, being here with them sure beats sitting at home. Yeah, online school gets so boring. Speaking of, at the January 10th TCAPS board meeting, board members unanimously decided to reinstate the mask mandate. Trojan TV reporter Ethan Rademacher spoke with board president Scott Newman-Bale in this virtual live on location report. Why did the board ultimately decide to change the mandate twice? I mean, I think uh, obviously the Omicron surge is very different. And when we originally wrote it to end the mandate, it was in October 25th. I think we all uh, want to be in an environment where face-to-face -face learning without masks is appropriate um, and clearly we weren't able to get there um, right now just with the Omicron surge and, and staffing, maintaining staffing as well. Did the increase in COVID numbers help determine masks being mandatory again? I mean kind of, we, <clears throat> we definitely obviously are, are worried about the level of the surge and um, but we also have to make sure that we've got enough specifically subs coming being able to work as well and that really was limited without masks. What were people's reactions to both decisions? Uh, one part about this is regardless of whatever decision we make, we're going to have a lot of angry people. Um, and I think part of that's just due to the kind of public distrust in in every level of government right now. Um, so that's kind of why we also try to make it uh, less about personal decision and more about some sort of very firm metric. Do you think masks will be man mandatory the rest of the year? Personally, I don't believe they will. I, I hope not. I, I think we were actually all getting to a pretty decent uh, place um, later in last year before the Omicron surge. So I'm hoping that that is true again. And yeah, from what we're seeing in other countries too, this is a relatively quick surge. So um, I don't know how long it will be in place, but I'm hoping that we're I'm hoping that COVID's well, well past us by the end of the uh, school year, which I don't think it really will be. Thanks, Ethan. Want to see the school board in action? The next meeting is scheduled for February 14th from 6 to 9 p.m. in Conference Room C. You can also watch the meeting live courtesy of TCAPS Media on the school homepage. In other district news, TCAPS has received COVID-19 rapid tests from the state of Michigan. These will help provide free tests for families who need assistance to secure one. See the main office for more information. Copycat threats are forcing closures around the state in wake of the Oxford school shooting, and now TCAPS has had a number of closures as well. Ethan is standing by with more information. Oxford High School recently faced tragedy when a shooting occurred, which left four students dead and seven seriously injured. Since then, copycats have been roaming around school districts in Michigan, even forcing closures or schools to go online. TCAPS is now among those schools receiving threats, including right here at East. We talked to Mr. Perkins to find out more about the situation. So uh, we did have a threat, uh, as you know, at East Middle School. Uh, first and foremost, um, our eyes and ears are all of you, all the students. And so with that threat, uh, there was a response by a student immediately in the morning, brought it to our attention. We were able to get the student into the office and secure with local uh, police uh, involved right away. Many copycat threats have been made around TCAPS and the district, resulting in local law enforcement getting involved and turning to their action protocols. We respond pretty much the same to all of them. We come to the school, we gather initial information, we talk to reporting parties and witnesses, we bring in the suspects, we bring in parents, we confer with our local prosecuting attorney's office, uh, we go to the extent of going to residences with, uh, with search warrants if necessary to search homes for 
weapons or anything that might be evidence of an actual plan. When a threat is made in TCAPS, the district has specific board policies and must follow with students' due process rights that help determine discipline and further courses of action. So right now what we follow is a due process and due process means that we need to uh, take the statement of the student, uh, we need to do an investigation. If law enforcement's involved, the courts will be involved as well and so we don't have a disciplinary action um, at this point in time that we can that we can share out. TCAPS overall had a total of five copycat threats the week following the Oxford incident and as a result the county prosecutor released a statement saying students who commit these actions will be held accountable. When the students themselves say, we're going to come forward and we're going to tell people when you start talking this, this sort of threatening behavior and law enforcement gets involved and we start prosecuting these kids, I think once they see that um, the only thing you're going to get out of this is trouble and not attention, not good attention at least, that that's what's going to quiet it down. Local law enforcement and EMS administrators agree that reporting any information that could be an issue is critical to keeping schools safe. Many, many times somebody doesn't know about it or uh, somebody that is thinking about doing something uh, that's not good, they tell another student or they post it to social media. And it's really important that if you see that, uh, you know, speak up to an adult, tell a parent, call OK to say anonymously, you know, if you see something that just doesn't look right. I'd rather, you know, that it's a false alarm and all that and as we investigate it, to know that and, and rather than somebody not say something and something bad happens. TCAS is reviewing safety and security protocols in light of the recent events. Law enforcement will continue to be a presence in our school for the foreseeable future. Reporting for Trojan TV, this has been Ethan. In school news, our office structure is changing with the new semester and the addition of our newest wing principal, Mr. Grissinger. The middle house office will soon be open for 7th grade students and then students will report to their grade wing office when they need assistance. Attention students heading to Washington, D.C. You have a meeting with Mrs. Mackey in the LMC on Friday, February 11th during advisory. You'll get a trip update and receive emergency and room request forms. If you're unable to attend, please email Mrs. Mackey for alternative arrangements. And speaking of the LMC, let's check out this week's Classroom Spotlight with a feature on button making in the library. On this week's Classroom Spotlight, we took a look at the button making in our school's library. Well, we wanted uh, to bring sort of a maker space to the library and um, they had been doing this at West Senior High and it was a success. So we thought we'd give it a shot and it's gone over really well. Yeah, well we have some um, pre-designed that they can choose from or they can design their own. They can um, draw, color, or they can send us the graphics and then we will print them off. We just have to make sure that it doesn't um, um, go against copyright laws. Students enjoyed making buttons to show off their interests and hobbies. I make buttons because they're kind of fun and I like, I like to put them on my backpack straps so that people see like what I like and stuff and I, I just kind of like them because it adds to my backpack. Um, they should keep making buttons because I just think it's so cool and every time I come home my little sister is like, oh my gosh, did you make any buttons? Let me see. Or like, just, it's fun. It brings, brings kids in. Um, it also helps them create and um, research their own designs, um, which is a great thing, and learn about copyright laws, that sort of thing. This has been Ren and Elu reporting for Trojan TV. That looks like a lot of fun. I love how the LMC has turned into such a social space for students. Yeah, it's a lot more interesting and inviting over the cafeteria for sure. Hey Taylor, are you into the Super Bowl? Yeah, it's pretty entertaining, especially the halftime shows. Ugh. Agreed. Drew and Grant are looking back at 2021 sports and the Super Bowl is just one of their highlights. Hi guys, welcome back to another sports report. Our first one, 2022. I'm Grant. And I'm Drew. This episode will be a year in review for the world of sports. We will discuss all the major events of 2021. That includes the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, the Olympics, the World Series, and most importantly, the return of fans. It really wasn't sports without them. I know. I'm so glad they're back. Anyway, welcome to the new year. This sports report starts now. Hey Drew, did you watch the Super Bowl last year? Yeah. And it was the same old story, Tom Brady. 
It's getting so boring watching him win every year. I know, right? But it's still very impressive. This is his seventh Super Bowl title, and he's hoping for another one. At 44 years old, he is clearly the GOAT. Okay, that is pretty cool. But I can't believe he hasn't retired yet. He has been in the NFL for 20 years. This game was another example of his excellence. In this game, the Buccaneers defeated the Chiefs 31-9 in a game dominated by the Bucs' defense. Now, last year, our very own Ethan Rademacher predicted that Tom Brady would get destroyed. This totally backfired, as of course, Brady won. Let's listen in. See you next week after Tom Brady gets destroyed. Bye! Bye. Let's see what he has to say. Welcome, Ethan. Why did you say Tom Brady will get destroyed? Well, to be honest, I just don't like Tom Brady. So it's not a matter of fact as, as I didn't think he'd win. It's more of a fact I just didn't want him to win. So same way. They're the same way. Yeah. Well, you must have been pretty upset when they blew him out by twenty-two points. Then. Yeah, I was cheering yeah. for the Chiefs too. That was very disappointing. Well, hopefully he loses this year because if he if he wins another Super Bowl, I don't know what I'll do with my life. But yeah. I think it was just more emotionally based, more than statistically based, because everyone knows that he's the greatest of all time. Even though I don't want to say it, he is. And has that clutch factor that somehow wins half the playoff games and Super Bowls he's in. So just wasn't thinking straight, I guess. Yep. Yeah, he had a really incredible run that year. He won like all of his games, and then he got to play the Super Bowl at home, which I think was probably one of the reasons why he won. Yeah, I think that and more the fact that he had so much time to prepare, prepare for the game. He didn't want to lose again against the Chiefs after they lost by three a game prior before the, that season. Um, he didn't want to lose again, and then I think he studied film. It was what a report I read from ESPN. He studied film and made sure that he knew what was going on, and I think that helped also play a big role in the Super Bowl outcome. Do you think Trojan TV will trust you with making another sports prediction? I think they should because I know my stuff. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes. Well, sometimes. Well, uh, except with Tom Brady. What's the yeah. Void predictions with Tom Well, but everyone has, everyone ha makes mistakes. You, no, no one's going to be perfect. No one's going to get every prediction perfect. Otherwise, let's be honest, they can make millions of dollars off sports betting. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But if everyone, but since I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, you guys could get one wrong too. You never know. All right, well, thank you for your time. Yeah, anytime. After the Super Bowl was the NBA Finals. Milwaukee won their first title in 50 years when they defeated the Phoenix Suns in six games. Giannis Antetokounmpo was named MVP of the series. Then came the Olympics. They were so weird without fans. It definitely felt like something was missing. Yeah, but the U.S. saw a great success. They won 39 gold medals and 113 total medals, most of any team. Yeah, but there was also some major controversy. Simone Biles earned a bronze medal, but made bigger headlines when she left for a period of time because of mental health issues. The women's soccer team also won bronze in Carly Lloyd's last Olympics. That was bittersweet, because I really thought they had a chance to win gold. Me too, but it was still a great Olympics. But one of the biggest storylines in 2021 was the return of fans. It was so quiet without them. I know. I really miss them. Let's recap how it happened. In the spring, they returned in limited capacity for the Super Bowl and college basketball. Then in the summer, for the NBA Finals, they returned in full capacity, but were required to be masked. In the fall, the mask mandates were lifted, and it was finally back to normal for soccer, college football, and the NFL. It finally feels like sports are back. I personally have been to a live sporting event, and it's so awesome. I can't wait to go to more. And the last major sporting event in 2021 was the World Series. Yeah, I watched it, and it was great. It pitted the Atlanta Braves, who hadn't won a title in 30 years, against the Houston Astros, who were fresh off the controversy of their sign-stealing scandal. In the end, the Braves won six games. This gave them their first World Series title since 1995. Well, that does it for this sports report. We hope there will be great sporting events in 2022. Thanks for watching. Wait, before we go, I have some breaking news. The Washington football team are finally going to change their name. 
The options right now are command commanders, admirals, armada, brigades, sentinels, defenders, red hogs, and presidents. Finally, their name was so late. No one should be called the football team. I think it should be the brigade. Really? I think the admiral sounds so much better. I wonder what they'll decide. I don't know. We certainly can't agree on a name. It must be hard to pick one for an NFL team. I know, right? I wonder what goes into the decision. The reveal will be made on February 2nd. Are we really done this time? Yep. All right. Back, Back to, to you, you guys. guys. Great reporting, guys, and great job putting Ethan on the hot seat. Yeah. In our final segment of today's show, we'll talk to you about EMS fire drills. You probably appreciate that we finished them up before winter hit, because it would be pretty cold standing outside in this weather. Yeah, but back in November, we had some unexpected alarms go off. Fortunately, it turned out not to be an actual fire. Emma and John got the scoop about what sent the fire department to East twice. Recently, firefighters were called to East due to the fire alarms unexpectedly going off. This caused confusion for students and staff. Even though there was black steam coming out of a vent that looked like smoke, the alarms went off due to a faulty sensor in the boiler room. Because of where my doors are located, I went out the back here by my, my classroom and I see all this, what I thought was black smoke coming out of the building. After the all clear was given to the building, the staff resumed their normal routines just to have the alarms go off again two days later, causing students and staff to have to evacuate. Uh. Um, at first I thought it was a drill because, like, it was exactly like how a drill would be. And, like, as soon as we got outside and I saw the teacher's worried expressions, I was like, um, this is not a drill because they didn't tell us anything about it. Honestly, I did not really think it was a drill, so I kind of ran out the door. Over time, the electronic components in the boiler room can go bad, and the aging boiler was in need of repair. It sounded like there was just a part that needed to be adjusted um, and replaced. Some, some electrical sensors that are on there, they, they detect when, you know, maybe there's a, a leak or something. Well, sometimes there are electronic components that go bad um, over time. A lot of people, you know, don't realize that this building is, you know, the, in the 30 year uh, old range and, and uh, it's not a brand new, you know, brand new building. And so you have electrical components and those things start to go bad. The TCAPS maintenance crew worked overtime to get the boilers under control. This has been Emma and John reporting for Trojan TV. Thanks guys. It's good to know things are repaired and under control. Well, that's it for today's episode of Trojan TV. Follow us on our Instagram at EastDNC and on our YouTube channel, Trojan TV East. And be sure to check out our website, the link where we have extended coverage of all things East. We're leaving you with a slideshow from our holiday fun week and music assembly. Have a great weekend, Trojans. Bye. Bye.